In this video, I'm going to be talking about range rulers. Hello AOS fans, Robin here, and today I'm going to be talking about range rulers. Yes, another little thought piece for you, a little venting if you like, I'm a little bit irritated by the internet this week um, and possibly for not reasons as many of you are irritated but uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, kill team and the movement gauge or the range ruler um, which you think um, heralded uh, a new wave of uh, some sort of disastrous coronavirus variant um, that was ripping through the world and, and killing millions of people such, such has been the outcry on the Warhammer 40,000 groups. Now I know that many of you are sensible and normal and um, probably don't get too upset about this sort of thing, um, but I, I, just, I just feel like it's time to shush people. You know, I don't want, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to bash people actually, no. So let, I just, I just want to look at why people are so worked up about this movement gauge, because it really is so trivial. Um, it, it's it's hard to it's hard to imagine people getting so worked up by it. Um, first up, if you haven't seen it, Kill Team, the new Kill Team is going to have its own special movement uh, shenanigans, different to anything Games Workshop have done before. Uh, which you know people don't like change, and so yeah, fair enough. Maybe that might be a little bit unsettling. Uh, and and then to combat this, they've 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 created a, a movement gauge, a range ruler. Um, to go with it. It's not a new thing. It's a new thing for Games Workshop mostly, but it's not a new thing. Obviously, uh, Fantasy Flight games do this a lot, and uh, so their um, Marvel Prices Protocol's got one, Star Wars Legion has got one, I think Armada's got one, X-Wing has the uh, templates as well. It's not a new idea, uh, but it's new mostly to Games Workshop games. Um, normally you have your bendy rulers and you move your inches. Now, you're still going to be moving inches in this game. Games Workshop had to pretty much come out in one of their articles and say, you can still just use inches because there is this movement gauge and it has this chart. Now, I have to say, this chart isn't terribly well thought out, I don't think. Why, oh why, they hadn't gone for better symbols. You'll have seen the movement chart online. It's one, two, three, and six inches. Not sure what's happened to four. Almost four was quite common, but four has gone. And one, two, three, and six inches, and they're represented by shapes now rather than inches. Uh, but what they've done is they've messed up the, the um, shapes slightly. So for some reason, a circle isn't one, a circle is two, and a triangle isn't three, it's one. And they used a square for three. And for some ungodly reason, which I really don't understand, they used a pentagon for six and not a hexagon. I mean, pff, I don't understand that. People say, well, what's wrong with just inches? There are a few game mechanic ways of, of, of maybe this could be interesting. Um, an interesting way of doing things maybe because movements are now they're not just like you move a circle or a square they are you move two circles or you know one one pentagon or whatever or three three circles and three skirts three circles would mean you move six inches but maybe rather than just moving your six inches in one go you have to move in a two inch block so you go two inch two inch two inch and so you can go round terrain maybe um, I think you can jump over one um, I think most things move circles you can, I think there was an article that says you can jump over terrain at the cost of a circle. Uh, it hasn't really been fully explained or explored yet. Uh, but in more interestingly, if you uh, perhaps if you were something reduced your movement, so you went down from if you were three circle uh, against something that big that was one pentagon, one, so both move six inches. Three circles is six inches. One pentagon is six inches. If you lost one movement, you'd be going down to four. If you were two cir three circles, you go down to two. So you go down to four. But if you were one pentagon you completely lose all your movement. I don't know if that's how they're going to utilise it, but that is one way in which this kind of symbol system might work. It might make you more mobile um, and certainly can mitigate the effects of different uh, movement penalties or even bonuses. Um, so that is a little bit of game mechanics uh, point of view. And there are, many, there are probably many other ways in which this will be used. Um, but uh, games which have been at pains to point out, you can still use a tape measure. Now, I think we probably knew that, didn't we? I mean, it, 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 literally, it equates to inches. We can use a tape measure. We don't need the movement gauge. So don't get upset about it, you know? Just go and use your tape measure. We don't care what you do. Use bananas if you want to. Bananas. Whatever. Get your old slotter bases out. Use those. It doesn't matter what you use as long as you're having a good time, you know? So just 
do what you want, enjoy it, and don't moan about it. Because it seems to me that, uh, and it's often been said, I have to say that, but the biggest thing in this hobby at the moment is moaning about um, what Gaze Workshop is doing. Oh, Gaze Workshop is just trying to make money. Well, I hate to break this to you, but Games Workshop are trying to make money because they're a company. In case you haven't noticed, the majority of us in the world live in a capitalist society. And this means that we buy, we pay for services and goods uh, that are provided by somebody else. And that somebody else normally makes money out of it. And quite often it's great big fat loads of money. You only have to look at Amazon and Starbucks and Apple and things like that. And they're making an absolute mint. Yeah, I'm sure while you were hammering away on your iPhone, sipping your Starbucks coffee uh, on the chair you bought from Amazon, going, oh, Games Workshop just want to make money. Well, yes, because Games Workshop are a stockholder, a shareholder company, so the shareholders need them to make money. But we need them to make money so that they can make the games that we enjoy playing or allegedly enjoy playing. Um, so we kind of do need them to make money. If, if they were a not-for-profit enterprise, I suspect there'd be a lot less games. Um, and, you know, and so they they are trying to make money. That is just the, the that is literally their raison d'etre is to make money. Especially now they're floated on the stock stock market. There are very few companies in the world, whatever you're buying, whatever you're doing, where they are, they just do it for purely for altruistic purposes. That they they're not trying to make money. It's, that is just that is the society we live in. So I'm sure you know that, but stop moaning about it. Secondly, how are they trying to make money? This is the, the funniest thing I really, uh, uh, of all these comments, is like, oh, they're just doing it to search a range ruler. Well, they're not. They're quite clearly not, because the range ruler is in the box. And if the range ruler wasn't in the box and they designed it a different way without a range ruler, you wouldn't have moaned. So they, but they still would have sold it for £125 or whatever it's going to be. They wouldn't have said, oh, we haven't put a range ruler in it, let's knock off five quid. They wouldn't do that. It would still be £125. So you're actually going to get more to play the game because you're going to get this extra little bit of road for, even if you don't want it you might get away with selling it on ebay so you might make your money back so you know horses for courses they're not trying to sell you a razor if they do do a fancy brass razor i know they've done that kind of stuff before there may be yes you could say oh they're just trying to sell extra products but you don't have to buy those extra products because again that's how a consumerist society works if you don't like it don't buy it and they won't make them anymore. There's been a few things for Warhammer Underworlds that they made that they've ended up stopped making because people didn't buy them. Now, second to that, if you've ever, ever, ever bought a pack of faction-specific dice or, um, you know, a particular army dice, which are just D6, not even with the special symbols on, just the ones that are D6, you can't moan about Games Workshop selling things just to make money because that is literally their purpose for those. So if you're somebody who's got like a matching dice for every single one of your armies and everybody your kill team armies, don't moan to us about Games Workshop just trying to make money because you're literally helping them do that, which is a good thing, as I've said, because that means they can make more products and more games, but don't moan about it because, again, that's the society that we live in. And it's not like Games Workshop are the only ones who do it. Fantasy Flight Games or AMG or whatever they are now, um, they all have their own ways of doing it. You know, Fantasy Flight Games, Star Wars Legion, X-Wing, they all have the cards that you need to play in the boxes to do them. And sometimes you end up buying a box for the card that's in it, not for the actual model or whatever. And that's just their model. That's their way of doing it. Games Workshop did it with Warhammer Underworld. They put they distribute the universal cards throughout the warbands. And some of the, you know, some of the better ones are, you know, you, you end up might you might buy a warband just for a couple of cards that you didn't you don't actually really want the warband. That's just again, that's just the way of the world. Money makes the world go round, I'm afraid. But perhaps the most important thing of all is like, oh, they've designed this game this way. Why have they done that? They didn't design it because they thought it would be rubbish. This this game, whatever game it is, Games Workshop um, are making, or any company are making, they that is people's jobs, livelihoods. They have put time and effort into that. And I don't think any of them sat down and wrote uh, and thought, right, let's design this game, but let's put something in it that's shit so that, we don't, you know, so that nobody enjoys it. I'm pretty sure they don't do that because, again, nobody will come back. Now, there is an argument to say Gaze Workshop primarily is a models company and rules writing isn't their strong point. I could totally see that argument. Some of the rules are, are, are very woolly. Even Warhammer Underworld has a very tight rule set. Sometimes you're just like, oh, why have they done it that way? But they didn't do it deliberately. They didn't deliberately leave a loophole. And they may not have done the right testing to... Uh, notice the loophole but they didn't deliberately write in stuff that wasn't that didn't work and that's going to be the same with this kill team you might not you might not like the way it plays you might prefer it the way 
you did you, you used to play it, but you, uh, to be honest from going to workshops point, i'm afraid you're already a customer you're probably already um, up to your neck in plastic and you're probably going to buy this too for the plastic they're looking for new ways to get new players to play the game and they're looking around them yes they're looking around them to a fancy flight games other companies that, and how they do things and they're probably bringing in you know they, they had it they had uh, job adverts various jobs over the last six months to a year they're bringing in new blood with new ideas because the games come games world at the moment is evolving at an incredible rate and it's very exciting if you're a games player because it's all sorts of different mechanics um, I was playing a role-playing game mothership the other day with some of our patrons and it was quite old school but also it was it was um, lots of fresh ideas on the role-playing genre uh, which is brilliant and that's happening across the board so games workshop are trying out these new ideas some of them probably won't work in the context of their setting but until they've hit the shops and they've been played for a year or so, then um, you know they're they're, they're not going to know. So they've got to try these things. They've got to try these things. I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm always cautiously optimistic when Games Workshop make a game. They have made mistakes. Curse City was a mistake. I didn't particularly like the way they rolled out the, the previous. Uh, war cry for me i was sort of into it and then there was just so much a deluge of stuff because they've got all this huge fan base i understand why they did it yeah you know, people are with existing armies but for a new player it was a bit overwhelming and i gave up um kill team the last implementation of kill team was uh, frankly quite poor lots and lots of roles before anything happened um so you know they they they've never been great at writing rules give this set a chance I, I, I want to give it a chance i want it to be good what i really hope is that we don't get overwhelmed by loads of other stuff uh for the game coming piling on piling on piling on piling on it just end up like um I remember, you know, old enough to remember cracker jack where they used to have to hold the toys and then they, you know, they give you a cabbage if you drop one and if you've got three cabbages you're out that's what sometimes playing games watch games can feel like but I'm cautiously optimistic for Kill Team, and I don't care that it's got a Rage Rule in it. If I don't like the Rage Rule, I do feel like maybe it's going to be a bit cumbersome on a board with lots of lots of scenery on it. If I don't like the Rage Rule, guess what? I won't use it. I'll use my tape measure, he says, searching around for tape measure, which isn't in here. Because I can, and this is the other thing, I think sometimes we, we feel a bit spoon-fed these days. Now, it's all very well going on about how old I am. I, we used to pretty much have to make our games from the ground up. Warhammer, second, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle 2nd Edition was a little bit better than 1st Edition, but there weren't all the rules in there for stuff. We just used to make shit up, uh, quite often to our advantage. But we just used to make stuff up, and that actually was was half the fun. And it's probably how you end up working at Games Workshop when you when you make your own rules uh, and you design your own stuff for the games, that for the bits of things that they don't quite work or they haven't quite got. So look at it as an opportunity. Okay, maybe you don't like the Rage Runner, but look at an opportunity, a way of thinking, well, okay, how can we make movement more interesting in, in, in games? You know, okay, I've got this tape measure. What can I do with it? That's kind of what they're doing, and maybe you could do it too. So that is a bit of a rant. Um, do put in the comments below what you think about the Rage Ruler. Uh, please don't tell me games work. We're just trying to make money. I know that means at least milky wheel now. Um, but, um, yeah... <sighs> Games Workshop do want to make money, and we want them to, because if they don't, they'll close, or somebody will buy them, and they won't be the company that they were, which, okay, for a lot of you, that might be great, uh, but for a lot of us, that would be quite sad, because we love playing the games, turning up, and yeah, we all like moaning about it a little bit, but just maybe, just a little bit. Till next time, I hope you've enjoyed this, hope it hasn't turned you off. Um, if you're new to the channel, do like and subscribe. You can normally find uh, Warhammer Underworld uh, videos on here and quite often less kind of uh, hyperbolic uh, diatribes. But um, if you like that kind of thing, do uh, do like and subscribe. I will, you know, if you do do like a diatribe, let me know. I can, I can spout rubbish about anything most of the time. Um, so until next time, we'll see you soon on the Ages of Sigmar.